Welcome to today's session around deep dive on Amazon uh, uh, prediction for architectures and uh, for image analysis. My name is Mayank Tucker. I'm a solutions architect with AWS, and I've been working with AWS for the past two years, been focusing on uh, healthcare vertical uh, within AWS. Um, today's session is about uh, exploring uh, some, um, some use cases uh, around computer vision technology and seeing how Amazon Conjunction can help. Now, this is a level 400 session, uh, which means this is an, uh, an expert session. So uh, uh, I'm expecting some kind of background on the services that I'll be using in this uh, demo. So let's jump in. So we have a very packed agenda today. And uh, here is a, um, a high level of uh, what, uh, what I'll be covering today. I will be starting with uh, what Amazon Recognition is and covering uh, uh, what, is a, uh, what is the feature set. We can talk about uh, what, are the, what are the feature sets that customers are using. Uh, we can talk about new features and their applications. Um, I will be jumping into some of the real world use cases, uh, covering, uh, I think, four use cases today. And I have a demo for, uh, for, our, uh, for one of them. And then lastly, I will be wrapping up everything uh, using Amazon Recognition ecosystem talking about how uh, the service integrates with other services that we have on AWS. Uh, in the end, I have some links for you, uh, and I, I also have the source code for the demo that I will be using. Um, you, can, um, you can obviously go to GitHub. Uh, the link is provided in the end of this session, and download uh, that code and play with it. In a nutshell, Amazon Recognition AI is a highly scalable deep, uh, deep learning, uh, a deep, uh, deep learning based, image analysis service. Now, Andy today morning also announced a new feature around video, uh, but I think I will be focusing this session around the image-based features. And if you guys have any questions around that, I would be happy to take uh, some questions offline after the whole talk. Now, we try to make it very easy to extract rich metadata uh, from visual content. Uh, we have an API-driven API model um, and pay-as-you-go model, which makes it super easy for, uh, for customers like you, be it a developer or an enterprise, to start using the service with minimum setup. So here is a list of reasons why customers are trying to use Amazon Recognition. First is basically um, customers come back to us and tell us how difficult is it to go back and um, implement something like a deep image, uh, a deep, uh, uh, deep learning based image analysis features in their applications. Well, uh, with this service, you can jump right in and start using uh, these features uh, uh, with minimal, uh, um, uh, minimal uh, setup time. The service is based upon artificial intelligence at its core, so we can, uh, so we can continue to add more and more features, more and more uh, facial, uh, 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 facial detection features, and for objects as well. The service is built upon a very scalable architecture. It is used, actually, to, to analyze billions of images uh, per day uh, within Amazon. It is integrated um, with, um, with popular AWS services like uh, S3, Lambda, IAM, and CloudWatch, and so on. It, is, uh, it also uh, allows you to start pretty easily at a low-cost model. With the service, you only pay for the image that you analyze and the facial metadata that you store uh, in the service. There are no upfront fees. There are no minimum commitments. Um, we also offer a tiered pricing model so that you can go back and start using it. So the more you use, the more you save. And finally, customers tell us that uh, it's very easy to, to go back and implement this in the products and applications. So uh, in the end, it can decrease time to market and help the customers uh, um, try to implement solutions uh, on a much faster scale. Let me begin with exploring uh, the Amazon machine learning stack and see what we have to offer out here. Now, within AWS, we've been focusing on trying to get this uh, feature stack uh, and capability to our customers on a democratic scale. In doing so, we see that machine learning stack has three key layers, the infrastructure and the frameworks on the bottom, the platforms, and the finally, uh, the managed API services layer. The infrastructure and the frameworks layer offers customers various accelerated 
computing instances, uh, families like the P family and the G families, along with various uh, deep learning uh, uh, frameworks that are out there, we provide an AMI which contains all these frameworks, uh, makes it easy for you guys uh, to go back and start, uh, start using deep learning frameworks like this uh, pretty easily. The platform layer focuses on providing you various computation abilities uh, that, uh, that make processing of these deep learning algorithms uh, much, uh, much easier uh, and within the reach of every developer. And finally, uh, we have pre-trained a set of services focusing on vision, speech, and language. And this is where uh, Amazon Production will sit. Let's jump in. So what does it offer? The first use case that I'm going to explore is object and scene detection, which, allow, which can be used by, uh, used by customers to identify thousands of objects, like vehicles, pets, people, etc., uh, providing a confidence score along with every label. It, uh, it can also detect scenes from images, uh, so helping you to identify whether the image contains a beach or a sunset, and so on. Customers are using it uh, to search, filter, and curate a large image libraries using this feature. The next feature is facial analysis, which allows you to go back and lo uh, locate human faces in the input images. And you can analyze face attributes, uh, uh, such as whether the face is smiling, or the mouth is open, or the eyes are closed, and so on. Now, these labels also come back with a set of, uh, uh, set of uh, scores, which we call as confidence scores. Um, this is expressed as a percentage and allows you uh, to measure the prominence of a given label. It also gives you a position and a triangular frame for, for, each, for each face that is detected in the image, making it easier for you to, uh, to track user sentiment. The next feature is uh, image moderation, which enables customers to go back and detect explicit and suggestive content and add image filtration uh, to your uh, applications uh, with, uh, with very minimal setup. We do this by providing a set of hierarchical list of labels along with uh, confidence scores, which enable you to, uh, to implement finely grained control uh, models within your application. You can go back and control which images to allow and which to block. Face comparison is a feature which allows you to go back and measure the likelihood um, of uh, two faces uh, in two images uh, of the same person. You can also go back uh, and, uh, and compare a live picture along with the reference picture in real time and figure out if the, person, um, if the faces are, belong to the same person or not. Facial recognition allows you to, uh, um, to find similar faces in a, um, in a collection. We support indexing of faces um, and making collections of them. Now, when we make collections of them, we are not storing the actual image bytes. We are just storing the facial metadata uh, around the face. Now this uh, actually allows you to go back and search faces in real time, uh, which can actually uh, find the best match in a collection uh, as compared to a given reference image or a reference face. And lastly, we can also identify celebrities, folks who are, uh, who are famous, noteworthy, or prominent in their own field. Uh, you can detect and identify these folks in the, um, in the input image. And you can use this feature to go back and index and search digital image libraries depending upon the interest, depending upon the application that you're trying to build. So let's spend some time around what is new. We recently announced the feature called Text in Image, which can allow you to, uh, to go back and detect textual content from images. Now what this uh, allows you to do is go back and uh, find embedded uh, text in images, things like license plate numbers, things like phone numbers, things like uh, street signs, um, um, yeah, which can be captured by cameras, or uh, which can also go back and find out uh, text, uh, and it can convert into uh, something which can, a machine can read. We support most Latin scripts, and it is built to work with real world images rather than document images. We also support a large variety of fonts, layouts, uh, and styles, and so on. It could be on a banner, it could be on different backgrounds. Um, I, would, I, would exp uh, I would encourage you to go back and uh, test it out. Now, customers uh, came back to us and told us that they would like to have this feature, uh, feature set, where they can go back and uh, feed images 
uh, which, uh, which contain this kind of text, and they would like to automate the entire process. We listened and we delivered this kind of feature set. You can use this uh, in image sharing and social media applications. You can enable visual search depending upon index of images that contain the same, uh, same keywords, for example. Or you can go back and uh, start applying uh, use cases around security and safety. For example, you can identify vehicles coming in um, um, by taking pictures of the license plates and figuring out whether that vehicle is a valid vehicle or not. We also improved an existing feature of face detection and search. Um, now, we expanded the search, uh, um, we expanded uh, 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 the collection size to support uh, tens of millions of images. We also improved the accuracy for detection of, uh, of these faces uh, and verification by, uh, by, percent of, uh, uh, by a factor of 10%. When you pass in an image uh, at, uh, to the service, we also support detecting up to 100 faces in a single image. And lastly, we can do all these things uh, with a latency improvement of five to, 10%, uh, five to 10 times. So let's explore the API model uh, for recognition. Now, as with any other uh, uh, service on AWS, um, this service also comes with uh, the set of APIs. And you can access uh, uh, um, uh, this service using uh, APIs or console or SDKs, uh, whichever way uh, we are comfortable with. But talking about APIs, I can divide the APIs broadly into three different categories. The first one would be the label-based uh, operations, which, which can be used to detect faces um, and objects and concepts or scenes um, that are detected uh, in the image uh, which is provided as, as input. The label which are written has a confidence score. You can use that confidence score. It is expressed as a percentage. And go back and compare it uh, to a reference value. Uh, and uh, you can go back and filter images based upon that. The second set is the face based operations. Now, this APIs offer you an ability to go back uh, to detect, compare, search, and index faces, uh, which you can add to a collection. Now here again, keep in mind, indexing means that we are not storing the actual image bytes, we're just storing the patient metadata around the images. The last category is the collection management APIs, which is basically allowing you to, uh, to go back and manage and create collections. Now, if you recall the pricing model that we have for recognition, we charge you uh, by, the, uh, by the number of faces, the uh, number of images that you analyze, and um, um, and the number of faces or face metadata that you store in a collection. Which means some of these APIs are free. I can also categorize some of these APIs depending upon whether they store any information on our servers or not. We call them storage-based or non-storage-based APIs. When I say storage-based, again, we're just storing uh, the index uh, metadata or the face metadata uh, around these services. So let's explore some use cases and see how we can uh, leverage these features in some real-world use cases. The first use case that I'm going to explore is something around policing user-generated content. Uh, we can also think about as uh, uh, the content which, uh, which is uploaded uh, to any kind of website, we can ha how we can go back and uh, implement some kind of reviewing process around this. Now, this use case typically focuses on, uh, um, on the content which is made by a user. So think of a use case where a university is allowing its users to go back and upload images for printing an ID badge, or some kind of social media website which is allowing its users to go back and upload images so that they can share the, those images with, some, uh, uh, with families or friends. Now, if the gates are left wide open, we all can imagine what kind of uh, images can come in. It would be great to have some kind of uh, features where I can go back and detect the facial attributes of these images and compare this kind of uh, uh, attributes to some reference values to which can help me decide whether I should allow these faces uh, in my application or not. As you all can, um, um, can understand, this is not as easy as it sounds. 
Some of the challenges uh, with, this, uh, with this process would be, now, typically this is done by, uh, by deploying a team of uh, human resources. Now, whether it is a face of a human or not, every face has to be scanned by, uh, by a pair of eyes, this means, which means this is labor intensive. Now, since we are deploying teams uh, of people who are actually looking at these faces, the definition of uh, whether a person is smiling or not varies from person to person. Now, this leaves a little bit of, um, of a wiggle room in the entire process, which means my entire process is not uniform. I could be getting different results, which might not be adhering to my business policies. And if your application goes viral for some reason, which nowadays uh, it happens a lot, it's difficult to go back and maintain a balance between quantity and quality. So let's see how we can implement it on AWS. Let's say a picture, uh, a picture is taken by a user, uh, some kind of a smartphone or some kind of other devices. We can have uh, that picture submitted uh, to S3 bucket, and that would be acting as our staging area. We can trigger a Lambda notification uh, from that and invoke a step function process. Now keep in mind, there could be different images coming in, so I want to go back and apply a set of different functions, uh, a set of different workflows um, on, this, on this entire image. Now step functions can go and start passing all this information to MS recognition. The first API, let's say we can call, is detect faces. We can go back and figure out whether that image actually contains a face or not. If, and if it does, it is just one face. The second step would be uh, to go back and call the API uh, uh, for finding out whether that image contains any celebrities. We don't want to allow those kind of pictures. Depending on, the, uh, depending on the application, you might want to, but in this case, we'll stick to not allowing them. The third step could be going uh, back and trying to find out whether the image contains any kind of content which is not allowed uh, in my application. And finally, I can use the search faces API to go back and compare uh, this incoming face with a, with a known list of faces. So let's say I, I maintain a blacklist uh, 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 collection of faces where I don't want a, a certain set of faces coming in. This could be offenders uh, which you don't want in your system, and you could be populating uh, uh, this uh, collection from a known source. It could be your state's department of corrections, and you could be feeding that, uh, that information from here. Or it could be going back and trying to check for some persons of interest that you know and you don't want to allow into the system. Finally, we can have another Lambda function uh, which captures all this uh, information and stores the metadata on a DynamoDB or an Elasticsearch solution. So let's look, look at a demo. Yeah. So the incoming S3 uh, bucket or, or the incoming files can be stored on incoming uh, S3 bucket. And in this case, what I've done out here is I have maintained uh, two different folders on S3, as you can see out here. Uh, first one, I, I'm calling it as a blacklist image. Uh, collection, and the second one is an input image collection. The blacklist image uh, is basically an, an S3 folder which contains all the images that I don't want in the system. And the input images is basically my, uh, my folder where my images would be coming in when I start processing them. Let's look at my step functions. Now in the step function scenario, um, if you're aware of uh, the, the way it works, I have a different uh, states which I can execute uh, depending, upon, uh, depending upon certain choices which are made. Each of these states can be wired up uh, to, a, to a particular lambda function, which uh, we shall be exploring out here. Now, this is, this is a long list of uh, pipeline which I implemented out here, and you can go back and extend this um, uh, in any way you want. In this scenario, what I'm trying to do out here is, um, I have a, a state called detect faces, which I pass, I pass in as an input. I have a JSON structure which I keep on passing through, uh, uh, through this entire state machine. Now this JSON structure would be collecting information around whether each uh, state passed or failed, and uh, it would be ca capturing some error messages, which could be going down in the end. And I have two hooks which I have defined out here. Um, I call it process failure and process success. These are basically lambda functions where, where you can go back and implement your own custom logic if you wanted to. 
And they both converge on a state called index image, which is basically another lambda function, uh, which is just doing some kind of, uh, uh, um, um, uh, of input images a function on an elastic uh, search domain. So you can go back and analyze uh, these images at a, at a later stage. So, start, so let's start lo uh, looking at some of the lambda functions that we have. The first one that I want to go back and find out uh, and look at is detect faces. Now, this, uh, this lambda function, the only, fun uh, the only process that it's going to do is pick up the image and go back and uh, figure out whether uh, this, uh, uh, this image has any human face or not. If it does, a one and only one. So I use Python out here, and um, you can uh, use uh, any of the languages uh, that Lambda supports. So I have a function called detect faces, as you can see out here, and I'm passing in uh, the method, uh, passing in uh, a S3 bucket and the key, and calling uh, the method detect faces. On the, out, um, on the output response, I'm just trying to check whether, uh, whether there are faces uh, uh, there or not. And as I mentioned, uh, the, the, uh, the response of, of the detect faces uh, API would be giving you all the faces that are detected in that, uh, in that uh, uh, image. I check if it is um, zero faces or, one fa uh, or more than one faces and spit out uh, appropriate error. Or if I find one face, we can go back and start looking at uh, different, uh, different uh, labels, whether the mouth is open or not, uh, whether uh, the face is having some kind of sunglasses on his eyes or not. And I start comparing all those confidence values uh, with a given set of confidence values that, I, that I'm comfortable with. Now, I have hard-coded all, all this information in the Lambda function, but it's very easy to go back and modify this and uh, read this information from some kind of DynamoDB table if you wanted to. So we scroll down and we look for different, uh, different features like eyes are open or not and so on. I want to draw your attention to two, uh, two important checks that I'm doing out here. I can go back and look at the age range and I can also go back and look for the pose. Now, pose is an object uh, which allows you to go back and detect the orientation of a face on a 3D axis, whether the face is looking in the right direction or not, could be easily be, uh, uh, could be found out looking at uh, three different labels that we have, namely the pitch, the roll, and the yaw. The second function that I want to explore is finding out whether the image contains any celebrities or not. Now this, ima uh, now this image might contain a face which is a known or, um, or unknown face. Same thing, uh, I pick up the image, pass in the S3 object uh, in, the, in the method. If a celebrity is found out in the image, which I can go back and detect and look at uh, the match confidence and compare it with a known value. If, uh, if there is a, a known face out there, we can spit out uh, uh, an error message. And the API also comes back with a known name for the face detected. The third method that I want to go back and explore is uh, detect moderation labels, which can give you an ability to go back and find out whether that image contains any suggested content or not. And as you can see, uh, uh, we have a parent, uh, parent level uh, set of function, uh, parent level uh, set of labels and a child level set of labels. In this case, I'm just uh, looking, for, uh, um, looking for parent level set of uh, labels and comparing it with, um, it with a known uh, confidence. You can also drill down and start implementing a, a lower level uh, 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 functionality and go back and uh, uh, put in more fine grain control over your application. The last function that I want to go back and explore is um, checking the blacklist and duplicates. Now, what I do is behind the scenes, I maintain two image collections. One collection is basically an ongoing uh, collection where I store all the, uh, all the faces that are detected. And the other collection would be some, something where I, what I don't want in my system. So I'm calling it uh, the blacklist uh, collection. So the first thing that we do is uh, we go back and uh, pass in uh, the input image. And I pass in my collection ID as blacklist images. The response gives me how many faces are matched and along with, uh, uh, along with uh, uh, the count. If I find a match in the blacklist, I can escape out of my, uh, my entire execution and not allow that image to be uploaded. 
On the other hand, you can also go back and compare the incoming image uh, with, a, uh, with a known image which is already existing in the collection. Great. So let's see it in action. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test a function. This is my input uh, um, JSON. And I'm going to uh, test a function called silhouette of a man. So I click on your execution, put it out here, and start it. And just to show you how the image looks, this is the image I'm passing in. Now, to the human eye, it looks like a human face. Uh, but this is not a human face. It is not having any kind of human features. So let's see what happens out there. So as you can see, uh, it escaped out of that feature and went to process failure. And if you look, if I look at the output of that particular stage, it fails uh, with the detection of facial analysis failure and says no space detected. Let's pass in another test image. Now this time I'm trying to pass in a face which is basically a picture of twins. So to show you the image, that's the image containing two almost identical human faces. So as you can see, the system is able to go back and detect that these are two faces in the system and spit out an error message saying more than one face detected. Let's go and try to do something interesting out here. My third use case is going to pass in a picture of some, somebody who is having just, you know, uh, you know just uh, uh, a nice face looking, uh, looking uh, in the right direction maybe, and you know, uh, just one person uh, in the entire image. So let's see how does that work out. Now to show you, This is the image I'm passing in. Everything looks okay. You know, the, uh, just one face in an image, uh, no sunglasses, the mouth is not open, the eyes, eyes are not closed. It should pass. It seems like it failed. If I look at the output, it says the face is not looking in the right direction. So if you remember the post check that I was doing, is going back and trying to detect that. Now, depending upon uh, your input, if you are comfortable with that, uh, with that, uh, with that uh, face direction, you can go back and change those numbers and you know, allow this kind of images in your system. The last check I want to do is passing in a celebrity. Just to show you, I'm passing in a known face. Still executing. Great. In this case, it failed out on the check for for celebrity check, and it comes out and identifies the picture that it is of Tom Cruise. So this is how you can go back uh, and do uh, all this image analysis. Now the last check: What if I pass in this kind of images? Looks like a human face. But if you don't want these images in your system, you can just pick up an image like this, put it in your blacklist collection, and extend the entire model so that you don't want these kind of faces coming in. And finally, you can put all this information on, on Elasticsearch and go back and see how these images uh, have fared over the past, uh, uh, past iteration. It could, be, uh, uh, sh uh, it could be shown in a, in a different way. But in this case, I'm just trying to break up all the images depending upon how they succeeded, if they failed, what kind of failures happened out there. As you can see, you know, some of the images were failed because of uh, they were containing some kind of images of, of a celebrity, or they failed because of a facial analysis failure, and so on. Great. So let's go back to our discussion. Now, as I mentioned, uh, this code is available, uh, and you can go back and download this code and play with it. So looking at the challenges solved, 
This is a scalable solution, as you saw. We are using a, a bunch of serverless services out here. So you pay as you go, typically, uh, as, you, as you would expect from a serverless solution. Now, if you focus on, um, on, the, on the values that I was trying to compare all these things against, initially, when you are trying to learn the model, you can keep these, uh, on these whole values a little bit bigger so that you're only trying to uh, weed out the edge cases. Now, as and when your team becomes more and more comfortable uh, uh, with this entire model, you can start uh, to go back and, uh, and tighten these controls. That means you are, uh, you are having a less, and, a less and less burden on your human team who is actually going and looking at these images. And as a result, you are achieving uh, more and more uniform levels of, po uh, of policing. You can also improve security of your system by uh, populating uh, your blacklist collection with a, uh, with a known list of images, as I mentioned before. <clears throat> and uh, you can also go back and achieve uh, you know, finding a better image. If you allow your uh, users to upload multiple images in a system, um, you can use uh, the labels like brightness or sharpness, which is, uh, which is uh, output of the Detect Faces API. You can go back and use these labels and confidence scores to find the best images, whether looking in the right direction or not and help the user find the best image. Let's look at the cost implications uh, of the solution. So on the left, you will see I implement, uh, I've shown you um, all the services that I'm using. And the middle column shows you uh, the cost associated with that. Now, as you can see, uh, I'm, uh, I'm thinking about how we can process 1,000 images. Now, not all the images would be succeeded um, in this entire operation. Some of the images would fail because you know, people might upload uh, different kind of images. So I added a 20% uh, buffer out there. Um, and even though looking at that, uh, the DynamoDB and Lambda, you might not even breach uh, the free trier uh, that we have, depending upon your use case. But the entire cost to analyze, store, and index 1,000 images is less than $9. Let's look at our second use case, which is around optimizing check-in and check-out. <clears throat> now, this is an experience which we have faced uh, almost every day in our lives, be it waiting in lines uh, to get uh, through the security at an airport, or be it waiting in lines to actually uh, uh, getting entry to, an, uh, uh, to a happening party. Everybody waits in a line, and not all the queues actually move pretty fast. Now, what if there was a way to go back and uh, optimize the throughput of this queue by, by looking at the faces of the people coming in, trying to pre-process them in some way, identifying people who are already uh, some kind of loyal members uh, to, my, uh, to my organization, or weeding out people that I don't want in my system? Well. Think of use cases where you go and, some, uh, and buy something online, and you're supposed to go back and pick up at a store. Now, merchants can implement a time window where customers can come in, have their faces scanned, and, uh, and, you know, and uh, make arrangements uh, uh, for a product to be, uh, to be delivered, all with minimum deployment uh, of human resources. Border Patrol, for example, can assist pre-screen candidates or reduce forgery attempts uh, by, uh, uh, by comparing faces with a library of reference pictures from a known source. So challenges around this would be slow and lengthy, obviously, because there is a lot of human interaction involved out here. The process tends to be more error prone because it depends upon uh, more traditional uh, uh, methods for inspection. It could be form of a physical ID uh, that is checked, or in terms of uh, the use case that I mentioned before, where an online uh, uh, store order pickup the only form of, of identification in most cases is a receipt, which could be easily be lost and found. You can decrease uh, the risk for security uh, because uh, now you're not depending, uh, uh, because you're not depending on, on traditional methods. Um, in case you are depending on them, uh, it is pretty easy to, uh, to go back and circumvent them uh, depending upon what kind of authentication method you are using. And finally, this whole process becomes very labor intensive if you're trying to impart more security to the process, uh, because obviously, uh, if you want to improve security, you're going to throw more resources at it. So let's look at how we can implement using AWS services. We can have a camera which is uh, ca uh, capturing pictures, uh, live images. 
some kind of, uh, of user interface device is also uh, uh, accepting uh, some kind of IDs which can be scanned. This could be a passport, this could be a driver's license, and so on. The information is passed to an API gateway, uh, which is hosting all these APIs, which can in, in turn can trigger a Lambda function. The first thing that we do is we can store the image on S3 bucket. And the, and the fourth step would be to go back to a known source of images where I can go back and pull out a reference image of the person depending upon the ID that he has scanned. Once I have the reference picture, I can pass in both uh, the images uh, and uh, call uh, something like index faces um, and pass in uh, an attribute called external image ID. Now, the API accepts uh, 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 this, uh, this input so that you can tie your external systems to image recognition face vector that we are storing. The response also uh, contains something what we call a face ID, which is a unique identifier for every face that we detect uh, in an image. You can go back and store these face IDs in your collection outside uh, the service and try to reference it uh, for, for, uh, for future purposes. Next, we can call compare faces API, pass in the lab image and the reference image. Depending upon, uh, depending upon the confidence code, you can make a decision whether this is the same person or not. And finally, you can store the metadata into DynamoDB. So the entire process becomes much more streamlined now because you know, uh, now you can go back and start pre-processing information around these uh, around this people who are coming in. All this without compromising any security. Now, even if this takes away 20% of the burden on your human resources, this can actually add up over time and, and actually improve your throughput. As I mentioned before, you can also add a blacklist search uh, using the search basis API. You can also go back and try to automate a check-in and check-out process. Now, since a live picture is compared every time, as opposed to uh, some kind of a picture on an ID, um, you can actually go back and uh, also flag and detect uh, usage of shared or stolen IDs. You can add more value because now you have more resources on your hand uh, which are freed up and you can uh, use the, uh, those resources to go back and improve your, uh, your business core value. And lastly, another interesting use case could be uh, you can actually provide VIP service to your customers. So for example, if you detect uh, a known face in the entire queue, you can start to pre-process some information in the background, maybe like something like pulling up uh, the background of the person, and you, know, you, can, um, you can actually help uh, greet uh, these people in a more dynamic way and improving your guest, uh, guest satisfaction scores. The third use case I'm gonna explore is uh, demographic analysis. Now, demographic analysis, uh, especially in the marketing industry, is basically a study of populations. It is mostly done by, uh, um, by the marketing teams who actually target a specific population group and measure uh, its dimensions and dynamics, looking at attributes like uh, age range, gender, sometimes emotions, to go back and figure out uh, you know, how, how their offerings, uh, products or services are doing. And then use that information to go, make, uh, to go back and make a targeted pitch uh, about a particular service trying to map uh, shoppers to sellers. Now using MS recognition, you can easily go back and, and uh, find out uh, the attributes hidden in these images, like gender or age range, to give an accurate and real-time picture of the demographics in a given location. You can also leverage the emotion labels uh, that we give back from the APIs and the confidence scores to do a sentiment analysis and get a peek into your customers who are, uh, uh, um, oh, sorry, uh, peek into uh, what they're thinking uh, about your offerings. The current challenges, uh, as you might have uh, experienced, is uh, most of this, uh, um, these processes are done using uh, paper or online forms. When you go to a store, uh, they might hand you uh, a feedback form. Uh, they might email you uh, some kind of feedback forms. But the challenge out here is uh, it is done by getting uh, some kind of feedback forms or sometimes uh, a live human team is deployed on the field to go back and capture information. 
well, resource instance, uh, intensive. Now, not all of this uh, effort is actually rewarded uh, by fulfillment. In some cases, the fulfillment, uh, fulfillment rate is as low as 10%. Uh, now, to mitigate that, typically marketers, what they do is they go back and extrapolate the information that they got. Now, that means that you're actually masking the information that is actually coming in. And this, th this could mean that your, your analysis is not accurate. The last thing that the merchants see is a lengthy workflow, because typically the life cycle of getting the feedback is so long, uh, sometimes the merchant lose the entire opportunity to go back and uh, announce some kind of uh, promotion, which could be happening in real time. Let's see how AWS can help. Again, a live picture uh, could be taken. You could place cameras across your store or across your, your establishment. Submit it to API gateway, invoke a Lambda function, store it in S3 buckets. Call detect faces API and find out whether that image contains faces. If, if yes, how many faces? Compare that using a blacklist collection to, to add a security angle to it. Store the information in DynamoDB, which can be then tapped into it to go back and find out a real picture, a real-time picture of your, of your demographics at a, at a given point of time. You can move the data to our data uh, warehousing solution, Amazon Redshift and do historical analysis over a large period of time if you wanted to. And finally, analyze that information using Amazon QuickSight. So, if we are smart with a camera placement, if you place the cameras uh, pretty strategically, you can actually uh, cover 100% uh, cover of, uh, of, your, of your target audience. Um, you can improve security, as I mentioned before. Now, another thing is, if you start correlating your, your sales data or data like uh, your uh, Twitter uh, uh, feed or your sentiment analysis uh, um, around social media or uh, time of the year, maybe it is a holiday season or not, and correlate that information with the information that we are deriving from recognition, you can start looking at new patterns that you are ex uh, exploring from the data set. You can also achieve near real-time data analysis and respond immediately based upon current demographics. How would you do that? You can build this kind of dashboards. Now, if, uh, if you place, now think of a your scenario where uh, there's a store and there are multiple uh, sections around the store, and if you place all these cameras uh, in a different section of the stores, um, you can uh, start getting images coming in from, this, uh, from these cameras. These images could be geotagged, uh, maybe by some, uh, some metadata, or you can pass in the information in the, in the EXIF uh, file format. Whichever way uh, uh, you choose, um, you can pass those images to image recognition to go back and extract demographic features like age range or gender. You can also go back and find out uh, uh, the count of distant faces in every location. Now, correlating that information with the camera's location uh, and the demographic information that you actually derived right now, uh, and plotting it on a timeline uh, can help you build a real-time dashboard. Now, looking at this dashboard, if you look on the top right, it's very easy for, uh, for a marketer to go back and announce a promotion which is targeting all the males in, in the age range of 20 to 35 years in Section C. The, the last use case that I'm going to uh, explore is uh, persons of interest. Now, this use case uh, builds upon the premise of providing a security cover for a celebrity by continuously uh, scanning uh, uh, the, uh, uh, um, all, the, uh, all the perimeter around the celebrity. Now, think of a scenario where a celebrity is trying to mingle uh, with the crowd, and the team uh, who is actually providing cover for, the, uh, for that celebrity uh, is trying to detect uh, real-time threats, potential threats. The idea would be uh, to, to capture these images send it to recognition uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a frequent basis. Or you can also capture video and uh, pick out images uh, from this video and send it to recognition. And figure out uh, whether you know, there's a person of interest in the given crowd or not. Well, in terms of solution, it would look pretty similar to what we discussed uh, over the past three use cases. So I won't focus on the services around S3 and step function and so on. 
But in terms of AWS recognition, or sorry, Amazon recognition, uh, the first step would be to go back and figure out uh, and making collections. Now, these collections could be something like I could build a collection to store all the faces that I detect uh, in, um, in all my uh, scanning sessions. The second collection could be a collection of faces, uh, which is just storing all the, all the blacklist images or the, all the people, a person of interest that I'm trying to track. And the third and the final collection could be uh, a collection of people that I'm tracking currently. The, the second step would be to go back and use all these different APIs uh, uh, that we offer to go back and create, uh, uh, to go back and find out how many faces are detected and go back and compare um, how many people are, uh, are actually persons of interest versus how many people are celebrities. And then finally, I can use the APIs and use the collection that I, that I made in the first step to go back and do an index phase or search pages by image operations. You can also use uh, um, all these operations using CLI. So on the bottom, I've shown uh, um, some, some of the commands that you can use. Um, you can create collections using the CLI uh, feature or you can also go back and uh, do uh, other operations on image recognition. Now keep in mind our CLI uh, does not support passing in the image bytes, so you have to upload the image to S3 first and then call the API, passing in uh, the reference to the object on S3. Some of the use cases which I wanna just uh, explore uh, in, a, in a very high level fashion is people counting. So think of scenarios where if you can uh, place cameras at an entry and exit point uh, of any establishment. So now this can give you an ability to go back and find out the actual number of people in that, uh, in that room um, at any given point of time. Um, now, in cases uh, uh, where you can uh, try to use that information to figure out whether you are exceeding uh, the capacity of the, uh, of the room, or in cases where uh, if there is an event like a fire or a flood, and there is an evacuation, you can e easily go back and find out the missing people, maybe saving somebody's life. The second uh, use case is basically uh, tracking suspicious objects left behind. Now, you can go back and pick up the image and uh, use Detect Faces API to find out people's faces, Detect Labels to go back and find out objects like, let's say, a, a, back, a, a backpack, and correlate uh, those objects with the faces. Now, next time, that face is detected without that object, you can alert somebody and somebody can look into it. So let's look at some best practices. So I'm gonna cover some best practices, uh, um, how to interface uh, with them as recognition uh, in the best possible way. The maximum image size that we support today is 15 megabytes if you are uploading the image on S3, and um, it is five megabytes if you can, if you're passing the image on the API. Now, when you pass the image uh, through the API, uh, it, it's a bit faster because you don't have to go back and store the image on S3, um, but in case if you're storing the image on S3 uh, for, any, uh, for any, any other purpose, it could be uh, storing uh, that image for historical purposes, then I would suggest go back and uh, use the API and uh, pass in the S3 object reference. Uh, in that way, you are saving, uploading the image again. Image formats that we support today is uh, PNG or JPEG. So if you're capturing images which might be in a different format, you might wanna apply some kind of pre-processing uh, which converts these images to, to, uh, to, a, to a JPEG or PNG format. Image, uh, image resolution-wise, we support minimum 80 pixels uh, of images uh, with, uh, with a recommendation of 1,024 pixels in the X and Y directions. Now, as I mentioned, um, as I mentioned before, you can actually go back and detect up to 100 uh, faces in a given image. Um, but we recommend that uh, um, uh, you pass in uh, images which actually have 40 by 40 pixels, uh, which could be the size of the image, uh, uh, sorry, size of the face. Um, uh, for example, in a 1080 by 1980 pixel image size. <coughs> collections. So the face metadata that we store in these collections, they are optimized for human faces. Well, 
technically you can go back and store um, images of cats or cartoons and so on, but uh, keep in mind they're optimized uh, for human faces, so your search operation depends upon that. For CLI, as I mentioned, you can upload images to S3 first uh, because we don't support passing images from CLI. The maximum number of faces that, uh, uh, that we support uh, in a single collection has been grown to 20 million faces now, still providing latency under a, uh, under a second. The, fast, uh, uh, the face uh, search API um, can return maximum matching faces up to 4,096 faces. Delete, very dangerous option if you are not using it uh, um, with caution. You could have a collection uh, containing millions of images Delete that, uh, um, delete that uh, collection with a single operation, and then you might have to, uh, to redo all these things again because we don't have a backup of this. You can easily use IAM to go back and control who has delete permissions so that you can uh, guard against these kind of scenarios. Detect text. Um, again, we're trying to find out text in a given image, so period does not mean end of sentence. The way this works is we, we rely on the spaces between the words, um, and if, I, if we see a bigger space, um, that could indicate an end of a sentence. You can use Amazon CloudWatch to go back and observe an alert um, on Amazon recognition. So you can use metrics like uh, successful request count or server error count. So if your application is trying to call the APIs um, and let's say they're passing in wrong images or passing in wrong parameters, uh, the server error count can actually give you an, an indication on, um, on, this, uh, on, the, on, this, on these events. And keep an eye on those. Um, maybe you can go back and fix your API calls. Well, if you know your API as well, you can save some dollars too. So for example, if you're just trying to find out uh, how many faces uh, 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 are there in an image, there's no need to call detect faces if you already called uh, the API for finding out celebrities. Because the response uh, for the celebrities uh, API also contains uh, the face collection. Let's explore the ecosystem. So as I mentioned, uh, we have integration with services like S3, uh, IAM, uh, Lambda, CloudWatch, and so on. But you can also extend uh, this integration as I showed you uh, in, uh, in some of my use cases out here. Uh, you can use uh, services like S3 and uh, EFS to go back and store your information or, or your images. You can achieve decoupling by using services like SNS, KNSS, uh, uh, and, uh, and SQS. If you're looking for some kind of microservices architecture, API Gateway and Lambda uh, um, can assist you along with uh, Amazon ECS and the newly announced uh, EKS. Batch processing, um, you can use uh, AWS Batch or a fleet of EC2 instances and store this information on various uh, data sources that we offer. I use Elasticsearch, as you saw, but you can also use DynamoDB or even RDS solution that you, uh, that you might want to explore. You can also integrate uh, with media processing services like AWS Elemental or Elastic uh, Transcoder, which can actually go back and help you convert those, uh, those image and video files. Just to give you a summary of uh, what we covered today, uh, we started with the benefits, uh, went on uh, uh, to explore the, uh, the feature set. We also explored our new features that we announced recently. Um, we also spent uh, a bunch of time on exploring some practical use cases. And finally, we wrapped it up using the best practices around Amazon recognition. This is a list of references uh, that uh, maybe you can uh, use um, and add some value to your applications. The last link shows you uh, the source code that I use for the demo. Uh, it's available in Python. You can go back and download this and build, uh, maybe use it as a starting, a starting step for your applications. And there is more coming on Amazon, on Amazon recognition for tomorrow. Uh, just a list of uh, some, uh, some workshops and some chalk talks which are happening tomorrow. Uh, in case you are interested to know more, feel free to go back and explore this out. And that's it. Thank you for joining me today.